Oh, seems to have started. Tech crowd here again. Just thought I'd um, start up a new series of videos about um, laser light sensing. Go through a few options. And um, been playing with. Um, So this is the experiment setup. So I have the laser light here, and I have the sensor here. And the first sensor I thought I'd... and then I have the um, signal generator to actually pulse the um, laser. Now I was going to um, try something called a... let's see if I can get it photo diode and they look something like this it's very hard to see but you can you you get them either as photo diodes oh, photosensitive like that no oh, photo diode so <laughs> sorry <I'll laughs> photo resistor of course ah, so they look look like this and then the light hits the end and you can get them as the separate, just like that. So the legs attached, or you can get them ah, like this, so they're just like soldered to a holder. And then it has the pins here. Or you can get them as a module, uh, which has its own amplification circuit, and then the um, the blue box is the um, sensitivity control and then it has basically it has three pins you have they're well marked in my case so you have the plus five volts ground and then the signal wire. I'm going to have to shift the camera a bit so that we can actually see what's going on and this experiment is a bit mechanically <laughs> unstable <laughs> because if I hit any of these things then it will stop working so let's see if I can just bring up that that much. So this is um can just go through a few data points. So this is actually um one kilohertz. And um yeah, I mean the distance isn't that large, but I was quite surprised at the cl pure. Uh, so it's important uh, for different frequencies you need to fiddle with the sensitivity of it and the distance you have. But let's say you fix this up in a fixed fixed distance scenario with a fixed known communication frequency, you could probably tune it into so that it would work quite well. And um, I mean, already one kilohertz for something. If one was going to use this for communicative purposes, um, there are protocols you could run over this link. Um, that, that's actually quite fun, quite good for any IoT low um, communication speed application. Plus, it would, it's relatively inexpensive, and you could make it um, bi-directional by adding, you know, reversing the roll. I mean, adding a reverse roll mechanism. Because these um, photoresistor. Oh, now I'm rambling, getting out of the subject matter. But anyway, this this, this test. I mean, it's. I don't know. That, that is quite nice. And if I like two, two meg, uh, two kilohertz, three, four, five, six, seven. Where are we now? Eight, eight nine, ten. Okay, then it's the yeah. This is where it starts to fall apart, like 10 kilohertz. But then I know that if, if I, uh, and I've been doing this, if I'm placed with a sensitivity, one can actually pretty much get this to stabilize also there. But let's dial it back, and with this sensitivity setting, then I think it's, 
Uh, where did I say it would be kind of usable? Like visually, one wouldn't get any data corruption at like three kilohertz. I could probably push it up by adjusting sensitive. <laughs> Not doing this visual diagnostic. Uh, four kilohertz or something. Yeah. I mean, there are um, one wire serial protocols with um, uh, CRC correction options and stuff, so we could run through. Actually, produce the signaling of the um, laser with that protocol, and one could actually get data going through the, through this link quite well. But this video is not to cover the the data communication. This is just to demonstrate that one can actually use a photoresistor within a on an amplifier in a module concept where it has the amplifier circuit to actually pick up. I mean, you, you get some deforming of the signal, uh, and some switching delays, but I mean, uh, yeah. if if this was a communicative channel again, then with, yeah, it, it wouldn't, uh, that malforming won't have any impact on the data communication, depending on what protocol one selects. So I think that one could actually make a, I mean, this is a real cheap photodiode, I mean, low power, Fire running off five volts uh, with a tourist. I've, I've kept no MOSFET, I'm using the MOSFET controller. But I mean, my yeah, I think with um, you know, uh, playing around with an adjusted scenario where one needs a point to point communication, we could probably get quite good results. And taking into account that this is really cheap stuff, and most Arduino boards, you know, like have the uh, I2C implementation, for example, that one could um, use it directly and or borrow borrow a uh, another protocol. And the thing is, that one can actually run it on very small. Um, like a, I'll run it at kilohertz. That's like one. Uh, no, one has to divide it by eight. No, about a bit, bit per second. One kilobaud. <laughs> used modems for such a long time. <laughs> but I mean, you know, one kilobout uh, we used to run mod we used to run mod modems when I was a teenager that could only do three hundred bit was it three hundred bits per second or something? Cra I mean mind boggling really low speeds. And we still did stuff. Uh, and data compression and stuff. So yeah. But I must say I'm impressed with this photodiode implementation. I actually didn't think that it would work as well as it does. And um, it, it, um, I mean, I have lights here everywhere, and, and you know, reflections and stuff. And um, the with tuning sensitivity and the laser being so much more intense than the light around it, because of course it's a laser pointer laser basically then it um you 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 can see some wobbling wobbling in the signal but it's it, it's again nothing that would get inadvertently disturbed so you could use this in a daylight environment i'm quite convinced of that just by tuning the sensitivity so the sensitivity levels it's, so that it's not sensitive to ambient light flickering you might get problems if you have direct sunlight and yeah, um, stuff. But a laser is still a laser, then you basically could switch to a... I haven't actually seen more powerful standalone... I mean, actually haven't looked, but you might be able to get a more powerful um, laser diode module. Maybe running on a different um, nanometer uh, wavelength. 
Well, again, we're getting out of track. Oh, but anyway, anyway, this was a short video to show um, using a photo resistor as a receiver for a uh, pulsed laser light. Still doesn't really test the limits of what the laser optic um, speed, optical laser speed is in terms of switching on and off. So that's also a question. One doesn't really know if the limiting pack factor for the speed is the um, laser's capability to switch on and off. You know, what's the top frequency for the actual um, um, light emitting part to react to change in um, the signal from zero to one? and its distortion factors and stuff. And I must say that the pulse, it's a, this is an, anal it's an analog signal that should come out of the data pin. Now this is an important point. The photoresistor output data line is an analog line. It's supposed to be an analog signal, but if you look at the oscilloscope, I mean, it's pretty much perfectly, you know, in all practical terms, it's a digital signal. Which is great because then it means with the sensitivity set to a certain way, you actually get a digital output directly from the um, amplified photoresistor model. It makes things a lot easier. You know, you don't get some weird curved voltage signal that you then have to interpret as a digital signal. This is pretty, pretty clean. Okay, I think I'll uh, leave it at that. And um, see you in the next video. This was actually, yeah, I just thought I'd give it a try and was um, quite surprised it worked the well it did. Well, it did.